Thank you. So, who knows what picture behind me is displaying? What is this picture behind me? This is a picture of a ledger. One very old ledger that, however, nicely represents how ledgers work. They are just records of transactions, and those transactions are displaying either a money flow or a flow of goods or any other value flows. So traditionally, when we transfer money from one bank to another, we are not physically taking this money from that bank and, and bringing it to another bank. We are simply updating these balances and we are writing down new numbers. And this is exactly what blockchain does. This is exactly how blockchains work. Now, in the last 15 years or so, we have digitalized this process, but what digitalization didn't manage to do is to eliminate intermediaries. So nowadays, when there are changes in these balances, only specific persons are allowed to change those balances and write down new data entries. And this is highly inefficient, because our communities are growing and it makes no sense to keep pouring data into one place. So what if we could shift our trust away from central entities towards the communities? Well, we are already doing that. We have all of these cool platforms allowing us to connect with one another, Airbnb and Uber, to name just the most famous ones. And it seems like we are already living in the, in the era of shared economy. And these, these platforms are allowing us to connect with, with one another and meet each other's needs without having to go through central entities. But nothing about the world we live in is shared. This economy that we live in is not peer-to-peer. -peer. This is still peer-to-Uber-to-peer. -to -peer. Now, what do these intermediaries do? Well, an example of when we transfer money from one country to another nicely describes how little we know about these intermediaries. Like, for example, if I make a transaction in a banking app on a Monday, that money will arrive on a Friday, five days earlier. Now, in this period of time, from Monday to Friday, money wasn't in my bank, nor was it in the bank of my recipient. It kind of disappeared for these five days, and we have no idea where. And sure, when opening bank accounts, banks make us read all these long documents and sign up to terms and conditions. And what they're, they're trying to do is to, to convince us that their processes are transparent. And by giving us all this information, they're kind of wrapping it in a transparent wrapping paper, making us think we are the ones who have the power over our money. And the transparent wrapping paper makes the perfect illusion when you think about it. If something is placed behind the paper, you can see what is, what is placed behind it, but if you want to read what's written in small letters behind that transparent wrapping paper, your eyes and your head will start hurting. And this is exactly how it is with intermediaries. If you want to know all the details, your head starts hurting. Now, if we would only be able to shift our trust away from these central institutions towards the communities, we would be able to redefine economy as we know it. But how do we do this? How do we trust someone we have never met before and we know nothing about? How do we trust someone that speaks a different language and comes from a totally different culture? Well, for that we need two things. We need a set of clearly defined rules and actors who under no circumstances can manipulate those rules. And this is exactly what blockchain solves. Blockchain is a technology consisting of blocks and chains. And each block carries information. It is full, full of, uh, filled with transactions and transaction history. And each block is chained to the block before it. And the block before is chained to the previous one, and so on. And so they make a chain of, of information. Now, if somebody within this network tries to cheat, he or she would have to hack every single transaction back to the beginning of the chain which is incredibly hard to do. And furthermore, everyone sees the same history of transactions. Everyone sees, uh, everyone has access to those transactions. So if someone tries to cheat, all the other participants in the network will be able to see that the balances don't add up, and they will not allow this transaction to happen. And this is exactly how Bitcoin works. Bitcoin was invented 10 years ago and hasn't failed us since. All those headlines that you read how, about how some Bitcoins got stolen, 
those are fake news. Don't fall for that. Bitcoins do get stolen, but they get, don't get stolen from the Bitcoin blockchain. They get stolen from various platforms that are storing those Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies. So Bitcoin has been functioning for 10 years flawlessly. And I don't think we can say the same thing for our current financial system. So the financial sector isn't the only one that is facing intermediaries. Like global supply chains have gotten so big that they consist of thousands and thousands of steps. And if you have a process that consists of so many steps, data loss can happen much more frequently. Now this data lost in a supply chain can be less valuable, but it can just as easily be very valuable. Like for example, did the company abuse any human rights? or how, how high was the, the environmental cost of the product that I'm buying. Now, back when I was growing up, I used to spend my summers with my grandparents, and they had a huge farm and a lot of animals there. We had pigs, cows, chicken, we had goats, what have you. And I knew exactly where my food came from because I witnessed every single step of that production. I saw every single step of the food production. And this is not a nice thing to see, by the way. But I knew exactly where my food comes from. And nowadays, I live in Vienna, and I buy my groceries in a supermarket. And I have to trust the label on a product. I have to trust a stamp, a stamp like a fair trade stamp that is supposed to represent a, a fair production or a sustainable production. But we actually don't have access to this information in a supply chain. And if all of this information were written on blockchain, it would be accessible at any time it would be immutable, and it would be fully transparent. Because once you write something down on blockchain, it can never be altered, deleted, or manipulated. It stays there forever. So we've seen blockchain for finance, blockchain for supply chains. The next use case is putting governmental processes on blockchain. Like, for example, issuing IDs on blockchain. Now, with the help of smart contracts, governments can now issue documents much more securely. And what are smart contracts? They are simply contracts that have predefined conditions within them. And they only allow an action to unfold if all of these conditions have been met. So you know how some investors build huge skyscra skyscrapers and then sell each apartment three times on the same day. I personally know people who were victims of such scams. This can never happen with blockchain, because you can see all the transactions on blockchain, and they are immutable. You can't alter those transactions. So blockchain can prevent scams. Also, it is very easy to hide information behind paper-heavy processes. And this is a challenge that um, happens in many areas, but one particular area that is affected are the donations. So, if someone donates money to a cause, he or she is starting a long bureaucratic process. And it is not easy to follow money streams and money flows behind these bureaucratic processes, simply because there are so many intermediaries in between. And each intermediary takes a little money for itself for providing a service. And by the time the donation reaches its original target, it will have been reduced and it will not be enough for the people who are actually in need of that donation. So blockchain can solve this because blockchain is peer-to-peer -peer money. We can eliminate those intermediaries with blockchain technology. Now, if we are able to see the effects of our actions much more clearly, then that would just make us throw our money in a different direction. And this is an interesting thought, because if I, some, I suddenly start spending my money in a different grocery store, or I stop vacationing in that pollution-causing hotel, then the technology has achieved something much more powerful than just peer-to-peer -peer money. It influenced my decision-making. And this is how we create incentives on blockchain. If I suddenly have an incentive to collect plastic waste during my walk, I'm much more likely to do so. And there are blockchain proje projects that are already rewarding these uh, types of behavior, these sustainable actions. Like, there are tokens out there that reward you for just walking instead of taking a car, or taking a bike instead of um, taking a car. 
There are blockchain projects that are creating tokens for planting trees, for preser preser preserving natural assets. Back in 2017, when having an ICO initial coin offering was still fairly easy to do, a lot of these projects concentrated on peer-to-peer -peer energy trading. What does this mean? Well, peer-to-peer -peer energy trading means if my neighbor has solar panels on the roof, that neighbor will be able to sell access in energy directly to me without having to go through various intermediaries. And the technology that allows this transaction to happen has incentivized two things. It incentivized, on one hand, to the prosumer to trade that green and sustainable energy, and on the other hand, it incentivized me to buy that energy directly from him instead of buying it from the city. Now, I would do so because there are no intermediaries in between, which means the transaction costs are going to get lower, too. Now, blockchain technology can't achieve all of it by itself. Blockchain technology will not work alone. For many examples that I have given, um, we will need sensors, we will need robotics, we will need AI and IoT. And many there are many applications for blockchain technology and sustainable development, and as the cryptocurrencies hype is coming to an end, we are starting to see all of these potentials. And this funny tweet nicely sums up what everyone is hoping for. Josh says, I hope Bitcoin is like Snapchat, that people stop talking about it before I have to learn what it is. Well, an apology to the person who wrote it and everyone here who feels the same, but we will have to learn what Bitcoin is and we will have to understand how blockchain works because it is the technology that will make us redefine the economy as we know it. This technology has the potential to disrupt so many industries. Why do you think banks are looking into it? Because they know the technology will change the way they do business. So let's embrace this revolutionary technology together and let's get rid of that transparent wrapping to get paper together. Thank you.